Same kind of thing. So I'm reading here that it's okay for coffee on the fast. Is that with the no sweetener? So like no stevia. So here's the, the, this. Let me show you the books that I that I uh, that I mentioned. This is like making me seriously happy because I have, to have coffee. This this right here. I, this is this is kind of a good. I, I would call it a bible. The complete guide to fasting. Man, they go through a lot of stuff. And this guy, Doctor Fung, he has a clinic. He's an MD and. Um, he they he brings people in and they fly from all over the place and then they he actually like takes you through fasting protocols like that's all that's what they do right so they have he in the book outlines different time frames which I'll talk about here in a little bit and different ways to do it but they step through all of these different things that I talked about the different myths they talk about what's going on physiologically so I recommend this book the complete guide to fasting actually it's on there it's on your handout by Dr. Fung and then the other two books that I really like. Um, I mentioned that I haven't been able to really digest this one totally, but I know that this guy, Dr. Marcola, Keto Fast, Fat for Fuel, both of these are going to talk. This is more about, if you want to know kind of like what's actually happening to your mitochondria and your cells and how your body's producing the fuel and what's going on in your brain, this breaks it down more. This literally goes into like the inflammation, the Krebs, like yeah, it breaks it down more. And then this is going to talk a little bit more about the adaptive type of fast that he recommends because of the toxicities and things and why like what's going on physiologically when you when you're in a ketogenic mode so these books are all helpful um, so dr. Fung who once again this guy is like he's he's an expert for years and years this is all that he's done brings people in helps them fast um, and has multiple people working with him in his clinic he says that on a long-term fast or even intermittent fast Coffee, teas, and bone broths are okay. They also said that if you are like, uh, I, mean, I talked about this earlier, Barbara. like let's say you're on day three or four and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can do it anymore. They're like, you know, do some bone broth, put some salt in it, you know, drink some coffee, like the Bulletproof is popular, right? Definitely. Throw a whole bunch of fat, like you're basically mm -hmm. throwing like 500 to 600 calories of fat mm -hmm. onto your coffee, right? So um, I'm not a huge fan of coffee personally, honestly. There's a, I got reasons for that, but they're saying like coffee, teas, um, bone broths are okay. And like I said, it can save your fast. If you're going, I want to go seven days, and you're on day three, and you're about to quit, and you do some bone broth, it can kind of like level you out, and then you can keep going, right? Um, and what I also recommend, and they talked about a little bit, is like let's say you wanted to do a longer term fast, and like say you're on day two or whatever, and you're going, man, I don't know if I can make it. If you eat just a little bit of fat, mm -hmm. or a food that's mostly fat, mm -hmm. like some nuts mm -hmm. or whatever, it can be enough to kind of pull you out of that stage and allow you to keep going, mm -hmm. right? So you're still getting the benefits. Like you're not, like the keto fast, like what it'll explain is, as long as whatever you ate wasn't mm -hmm. a carb or sugar, mm -hmm. it won't mess up all the benefits of your fast, right? Like you're fasting because you want to keep your insulin down, you're fasting because you want to burn fat, you want to detox, right? All those things. So if you ate, you know, a handful of nuts or whatever, like you would completely mess up your fast. Does that make sense? And it can keep you going. So my first fast, 